Okay folks, today I want to show you this uh, rib fracture displaced the 6th and 7th displaced the fractures on this uh, x-ray and uh, I was seeing this patient not long ago and she was walking on the ice and she got uh, she fell forward and her elbow pushed into her ribs and she fell backwards and this is the x-ray I took and as you can see there is a very clear sixth and seventh displaced fracture can go from here on the top so this is one two three four five six you see the fracture here on the sixth rib and on the seventh rib so sixth rib and seventh rib and this is the area of the fracture you can see the displacement on the sixth rib and the seventh rib so this is a classic displaced rib fracture and let us see a few more views of the same person and if you come here you can see in this AP image same thing if you come to this area like notice this area here it's not as obvious in the oblique view but you can still see the fracture uh, let's go a little bit of uh, another view here and you can uh, see in this view also it's very uh, easy to identify let's take this view also a little bit uh, uh, oblique here and uh, you can take a nice view so but this is the in the oblique view is the best view for me and you can see the clear fracture here basically these fracture are common in falls as you know the chest cavity is uh, it contains vital organs it is protected by a bony rib cage and the ribs are important to give the stability and they also connected to each other by several layers of muscles that assist in the breathing and a rib fracture simply is a break in the rib and uh, we can say they are non-displaced and displaced non-displaced are simple fractures while displaced fractures are uh, they can cause complications and uh, there is another condition called flail chest when multiple edges and ribs are broken in multiple places and they separate a segment that would be free floating and uh, the important points here are uh, the most common ribs fractured are the seventh to tenth ribs so as you know in this uh, in this case you are seeing the seventh rib fracture here and the most common are seventh to tenth ribs and as you know 8, 9, 10 are attached to the 7th rib while 11 and 12 are free floating ribs. So 7th is at particular risk, uh, at particular risk because 8, 9, 10 are attached to it and uh, that attachment can cause uh, improved risk for this fracture, for this rib. And fractures of the 1st and 2nd ribs are very rare but they can have serious damage to the brachial plexus of nerves subclavian vessels and also facial or thoracic aorta injuries so fractures of first and second ribs are rare uh, thank god for that but they can have serious consequences on the other hand lower rib fractures are more commonly associated with injuries of the diaphragm labor and uh, uh, spleen you see just think in terms of uh, anatomy for example lower ribs think what are lying under those ribs and you can easily think about diaphragm, liver and spleen so they can have uh, injuries to those organs. The most common mechanism causing rib fractures is blunt trauma. Blunt trauma causes rib fractures by exerting direct pressure on the rib causing it to break. So Patients with advanced, advanced age, osteoporosis, osteopenia can also have fractures because of the decreased bone strength. So basically you do an x-ray and you see whether it is displaced or non-displaced fracture. 
and uh, you can also do CT scans to diagnose these ribs but uh, x-rays are the most cost efficient means to diagnose these uh, rib fractures. Many times patients come to you with a pain and the pain is uh, typically exacerbated with breathing or coughing and if the fractures are complex the patient may suffer from additional damage to underlying structures the sharp fractured end of the rib can puncture the lung and then the complex problems happen like pneumothorax for example in this patient you have a little bit of a pulmonary fluid accumulating in this area but that's not a big deal pneumothorax could be more dangerous if it is like a closed pneumothorax expanding and causing respiratory difficulty that could be life endangering a flail chest can also cause pulmonary contusion a bruise that is basically a bruise of lung tissue and this acute lung injury can cause sometimes adult respiratory distress syndrome so take rib fractures like complex rib fractures seriously because pulmonary injury can have devastating consequences respiratory failure is usually caused by underlying pulmonary contusion but not by the anatomic flail chest itself so coming to the treatment how do you treat it there is no specific treatment everything depends on the clinical presentation of the patient if the patient with a simple rib fracture has pain treat the pain give something for pain and uh, you can also encourage patients to use incentive spirometer and uh, it helps to improve the lung function and if the pain is not relieved by medication think of other things like narrow blockage when patients sustain multiple rib fractures uh, ox you need to give oxygen support because they may develop uh, problems like pneumothorax and if there is a pneumothorax you need to drain the air out of the chest with a chest tube and a flail chest also can affect the mechanics of breathing and in that case you need to do ventilator support basically the treatment depends on the clinical presentation and the complexity of the refracture so i just wanted to show you this uh, classic displaced fracture of uh, sixth and seventh fractures hope this helps for more videos, visit our website www.drpaul.org. That's for today. Displace the fracture of 6th and 7th lips. Thank you.